From Fox 49, KPDX, with complete local coverage of the day's top stories, this is Fox News at 10. Highway Patrol officers bring in hockey player Bobby Orr to help stop road rage. Okay, stand by everybody, here we go. See how a Hollywood director and an expert behind the wheel plan to stop the madness on the freeway. We'll have that story in just a moment. But first, our top story tonight. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Reed Coleman. First, police found a hat, then a truck. And tonight, police may have their most solid clue yet in last week's disturbing, bloody death of a Clackamas woman. David Schmitke shows us the truck and the face of the most wanted man in Portland. It's not just any old Chevy truck. It may hold the clues to a homicide. If it's actually going to be connected to a homicide, it's a great break. Um, again, we don't know. Saturday afternoon, police spotted the Chevy near 92nd Avenue in Powell. They'd been looking for it in connection with last Tuesday's brutal beating death of 28-year-old Linda Karlovich. And the man driving this truck wasn't in the mood to talk to police. A suspect was uh, ran from the vehicle, and he probably went in the direction of the uh, Hogate and 82nd, probably Eastport Plaza area. So from this location, he could have went right over there very easily. But now police think they know the identity of the pickup truck driver, 28-year-old William D. King, most recently from the Tigard area. This is not the homicide suspect. Um, may very well be related to the homicide, and, and that's just what we don't know. We desperately need to get a hold of this person, interview this person, um, to rule this whole truck in or out. Ironically, last Friday, William King was in police custody. You see, he'd been arrested and charged with stealing a different Chevy pickup from this Gresham apartment complex. Well, he was released on bail, and within 24 hours, was back on the street. King may have simply been a burglar at the wrong place at the wrong time. Here is a list of some other items missing from one of the apartments. It may have a connection with the murder. But from the cold facts to the hard truth, the motivation to find this killer lies in Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. Linda Karlovich was laid to rest this weekend. David Schmitke reporting for Fox News at 10. People, police rather, were able to list William King as a suspect thanks to you. A viewer of a newscast last night helped lead investigators to King, and police will need your continued vigilance. If you know anything about William King or any other facet of this case, call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department at the number on your screen. A fight between co-workers sends four men to the hospital. It happened last night at the Clackamas Inn around 10 o'clock. Here's what investigators with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department tell us. Five construction workers from Nevada went to a Portland bar. They got into a fight at the bar and then left for the inn. And that's when things got a little crazy. By the time it ended up back at the motel, um, it kind of continued on. They came back in separate vehicles of, in some way. Uh, by the time it was back in the motel, two or three of them ganged up on one of the other ones. Uh, somewhat of a mutual combat situation, but uh, one of them with the knife cutting several of the others. Three of the men have serious injuries. They are still hospitalized. No charges have been filed. It could have ended with a bang, but firefighters and bomb disposal experts made quick work of a box of dynamite found alongside Highway 26. The box was found east of Gresham last night near the eastbound lanes of the highway. It was called in by an anonymous tip, and to eliminate the hazard of moving the dynamite, the experts burned the box at the scene. 14 sticks of uh, extra gel dynamite that was uh, in a box actually duct taped. So how the caller knew that uh, that was actually in there, we'll never know. It was just an anonymous call, and, and nobody was hurt in the process. So that's the important thing. Police don't know who is responsible for leaving the dynamite by the highway. As you head off on the, as you head off to work rather on the freeways tomorrow, remember to breathe deeply and relax if someone cuts you off or if you become a victim of road rage. Road rage seems to be so contagious that a highway patrol agency has enlisted some of Hollywood's best talent to teach drivers how not to give in to getting angry behind the wheel. Director Hal Needham's witnessed road rage firsthand on the freeways of L.A. They're on the phones, ladies are fixing their hair, putting on their lipstick, or doing, or talking to the guy here, or uh, messing with his laptop, or whatever it might be, and, and they drive without any thought of what everybody else is. Now, the Colorado Highway Patrol is filming a public service spot to run during the holidays with the hopes of fewer accidents. A sheriff's deputy in Idaho is happy he had a camera rolling in his patrol car when he pulled a driver over for a ticket last night. 
A Bonner County deputy was returning to his car when a passing truck sheared off the side mirror of his patrol car. Jesus Christ! Sheriff 329, my truck's just been struck by a drunk driver on in route. If Officer Lund had taken one more step into the street, the truck would have most likely run him down. Instead, he fell into a ditch to avoid the truck. He suffered minor neck and shoulder injuries, but he hopped into his cruiser and chased the truck driver down. He arrested an 18-year-old young man from Sandpoint, Idaho, for drunk driving and four other charges. Eleven people were killed today when their van slammed into a tractor trailer on a rural highway. The California Highway Patrol says the ten adult victims were farm workers. A one-year-old infant in the van also died. The big rig driver says the van tried to pass another car but didn't see the semi coming because of dense fog. The final passenger on that van suffered several broken bones. He is in stable condition tonight. The latest word from Iraq is that Saddam Hussein does not want to go to war with the U.S. Hussein announced today that he hopes talks can avoid any conflict involving weapons, but the rest of the world isn't convinced of that after Hussein kicked out six American U.N. weapons inspectors yesterday. The remaining inspectors left this morning, so President Clinton ordered a second aircraft carrier to the Gulf. It'll arrive by next weekend. Hussein says he'll shoot down the next U-2 spy plane to fly over Iraq, but Clinton warns that would be a serious mistake with more than 20,000 troops already in the region. Those mysterious lights that lit up the northwest sky Friday night suggested UFOs to some, even though the Air Force says it was space junk falling from the sky into the Pacific Ocean. Still, the sighting swamped the National UFO Reporting Center in Seattle with phone calls, and the man who runs it has wanted this job since he was a kid. We're sitting in the right-hand seat of a 1953 Studebaker. That was our family car that year. And we were at a drive-in theater and people were getting out of their cars. They were standing, looking at this object up in the night sky. Davenport says hundreds of phone calls came in over Friday night's show in the sky. Most of the reports we get have nothing to do with UFOs, but there's nevertheless that residual uh, uh, of reports that cannot be explained away in terms of just classical pedestrian terrestrial explanation, twinkling stars, celestial bodies, uh, things such as that. Still, Davenport says he will keep taking the reports because he is convinced one day the phone will ring and those lights in the sky won't be just space junk. The UFO Reporting Center gets a lot of its sightings filed over its internet site. Microsoft faces some new competition over its hold on the web. Coming up, we'll show you who's daring to get in Bill Gates' face. And a kangaroo didn't quite know what he was getting into when he hopped into a little trouble. We'll show you the rescue effort next on Fox News at 10. It is perhaps our most impressive safety advance ever. A Volvo that can save your soul. Introducing the all-wheel drive cross-country from Volvo. Here, you live in many worlds. And you're a lot of things to a lot of people. And while what matters in your life remains the same, the way you stay a part of it all, clearly in the center of it all, keeps getting better. Life's better here. U.S. West. The best built, best selling American trucks are built Ford Tough. Get one to work hard or get one to play hard, but right now get the best savings of the year on a 97 Ford Ranger. Get the choice thing. Pick any 97 Ranger and choose 1500 cash back or 29 financing for 48 months. Then load up your Ranger with a six disc CD changer, four liter V6 engine, and shift on the fly four wheel drive and get 1500 cash back or 29 financing. See your Northwest Ford dealer. Self-service is the best place to shop for furniture. Hurry in and find huge savings in every department with special self-service terms. For the area's best selection of mattresses, shop self-service with your choice of premium Sealy Posturepedics, Simmons Beauty Rest, or Springer Back Supporter, queen size sets for only $3.75. Always the best price and selections, always the best service and terms. Shop now at self-service where delivery is always free. It is perhaps our most impressive safety advance ever. A Volvo that can save your soul. Introducing the all-wheel drive cross-country from Volvo. And now back to Fox News at 10, Weekend Edition. 
Unbelievable as it may sound, Microsoft has some new competition in the race to dominate the Internet. Five companies are ganging up to fight Microsoft in cyber world. IBM, Netscape Communications, Novell, Oracle, and Sun Microsystems are the five companies sharing ideas. Even Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates is taken back by this unparalleled level of, of cooperation in the computer industry. Gates told his shareholders Friday that the level of competition from this alliance is the most intense he's ever seen. IBM and its allies are working on an alternative program to access the Internet instead of forcing users to rely on one browser like Microsoft's Explorer program. In world news tonight, Wai Jingsheng, China's leading campaigner for democracy and human rights, is a free man. After living in prison for nearly two decades, Sheng is headed to the United States for medical treatment. While his release is a win for human rights in China, his freedom does not signify an end to the struggle. Yusuf Islam, formerly known as singer Cat Stevens, has made a rare return to the stage since converting to Islam in 1979. This concert is a celebration of the survival of the Bosnian identity through the war and the genocide waged on its people. And he's making a list and checking it twice. He's going to find out who is naughty or nice. Sinterklaas is coming to town. He arrived in the Netherlands by steamboat and children were waiting to catch a glimpse of him. The early arrival of the jolly old elf kicks off the days leading to the feast of St. Nicholas, held on December 5th. During that feast, Dutch children place their shoes in the fireplace to see if they are rewarded for being good. Well, a dog is a dog and a cat is a cat, but can a kangaroo be a duck? In Australia, one Riley Roo thought he was a feathery friend. Kangaroos are not fond of swimming, but this wild kangaroo decided to take the plunge into a muddy canal and wound up getting stuck. A local boy, with the help of a police officer, jumped in to drag the stinking root to safety. But when the heroes got the animal back on solid ground, he jumped right back in. No worry, though. The kangaroo finally was set free from the muddy mire at the expense of a hopping mad police officer. Pretty nice day out there. A little chilly, a little rain. It's winter. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Hi, Reed. It is, has been a cool one. We've got some rain moving on in tonight. And that's making it feel even cooler out there, combined with some east winds blowing as high as 40 to 50 miles an hour at the west end of the gorge. Burr, and that rain moving in, temperatures in the low 40s. South wind farther south in the valley, temperatures in the low 50s. That's the air that's headed in our direction along with some more rain. I'll have the complete forecast for tomorrow, and I'll go out six days for you when Fox News at 10 continues. For its size, a Dodge Dakota can carry and tow remarkably heavy loads. It's probably because the price doesn't weigh it down. Here's a big surprise from the truck that's full of surprises. Buy a Dodge Dakota and get a Magnum V6 at no extra charge. See the friendly Northwest Dodge dealer near you. 1943. To help our boys overseas, industrialist Henry J. Kaiser churns out Liberty Ship's Lickety Split. With thousands of men and women working tirelessly to get the job done, Kaiser realizes that their health is essential to the war effort. Enter Sidney Garfield, a progressive young doc who saves the day with his new brand of high-quality, affordable health care. He keeps the people healthy and the war machine running. 1945. Dr. Garfield teams up with Henry J. to form Kaiser Permanente, an innovative nonprofit health care system dedicated solely to the wellness of its patients. Today, 8 million members strong, Kaiser Permanente is living proof that good ideas endure. And despite scores of big business imitators, the company has never wavered from Dr. Garfield's belief that when the patient comes before the profit, the patient always profits. Kaiser Permanente, different from the ground up. Here we have clone sheep. And here we have the new 98 Accord from Honda. Which one is the bigger technological achievement? The new Accord has more room, more power, and more amenities at a very affordable price. The new sheep is just the same as the old sheep. Which raises the question, if you can't make a better sheep, why bother to clone it? Sorry, fellas. It's an Accord like no other. Fox Weather is presented by Les Schwab Tire Center. Our business is earning your trust. And now back to Fox News at 10, weekend edition. Well, the rain is back. We had a few dry days. And fortunately for ski interests, the 
snow is back as well. We're seeing some snow in the Cascades tonight, likely the beginning of the snowpack for the season up in the mountains. More of both are on the way this week as we have a couple of more storm systems headed in our direction. Quick look around the nation, what's going on first. Freeze warnings up for a southeastern section of the country. Fair skies tonight and a cool air mass is settling over that region. Some snow up in the northeast, a foot of snow in the other Portland, Portland, Maine. And some cool air dropping down out of Canada into the northern plains. And we've got our weather system moving back into the west. 50 in Boise, they could see a few snowflakes tomorrow. 40 Great Falls, 31 for a high in Bismarck, 42 chilly degrees for a high temperature in Atlanta. Here's what's going on. We've got a weather system that moved on in. It drew a lot of east winds ahead of it and behind it pretty strong south winds. McMinnville seeing gusts to near 40 miles an hour this evening with some strong southerly winds bringing in some warmer air. Temperatures in the low 50s to the south of that low and with the east winds north of it here in the Portland area only in the lower 40s. We'll see those southerly winds kick in I think by morning and we'll see the temperatures go up overnight. How about that? As this moisture makes it east of the Cascades in Washington, we could see a little bit of freezing rain over there or snow around Spokane. Temperatures hovering near the freezing mark in the Columbia Basin, but I think it'll be warm enough for just plain rain over there in the Walla Walla and Pendleton areas. Cold air, a few showers around tomorrow. The next weather system down here will be coming in Tuesday night or Wednesday, and that's going to be a wet and windy one with more mountain snow. Only 46 in Portland, warmer in the valley with southerly winds, and east of the Cascades, not all that warm in the Columbia Basin, and again, just above freezing tonight, but uh, eastern Washington, we could see some uh, mixed precipitation over there later on. Mostly cloudy east side, a few rain or snow showers tomorrow, snow level 3,500 feet, so some of the higher elevations east side seeing some snow showers tomorrow from this weather system. 47 in Madras, 44 Pendleton. Two to six inches of new snow in the Cascades by this time tomorrow, with some rain or snow showers decreasing during the day tomorrow. West side. Rain tonight turning to showers tomorrow. East winds gusting to 50 in the gorge tonight, decreasing tomorrow. 52 Kelso, 53 Salem, 48 Hood River, 55 in Newport. Forecast for the local area tonight, rain, blustery. Southeast wind 15 to 30, gust to 40 around the area. Low temperature around 40 tomorrow, a few showers, partial clearing. High temperature 52, wind will be coming out of the south. That's what will warm us up. Next weather system due in Wednesday, it'll be a wet and windy one. And then another one coming in late Friday into Saturday back to reality. But the snow is great news. We need some snow. Up yeah, there. we do. Yep. Thanks, Pete. All right. The UCLA Bruins may just have it in for any Northwest team trying to make it to the playoffs. The Huskies are farther away from the Rose Bowl now thanks to UCLA's win yesterday. And the Portland Pilots may not see postseason action thanks to the Bruins. Any shots sorts all this out for us coming up. Fox Secrets Reveal. With all the lies. I'm tired of these accusations. You understand. And all the secrets. Michael, look out! What happens when the truth. What did you say to her? Finally comes out. Kyle can never know about this. You want to know. You gotta watch. Melrose Place. Then. There's some things you should never say at the office. You're a tall woman with enormous breasts. Richard. That's one of them. Catch an all new Ally McBeal. Monday starting at 8 on Fox 49. Outside yet this morning? Boy, have we got a snow prize for you. Need snow tires? Flesh wash, traction for whatever you drive.